So I'm here with Chastity Wilson and El Securador. And they've got this um, fanzine called uh, Multiverse Madness. And <laughs> well, it's, it, it has a long and storied tradition in nerd culture. So you are an excellent heir to it, I think. So, so we were we were talking here at the booth, and um, I really like what you guys um, stand for. You're you're talking about inclusion in comics across a lot of different dimensions. Can you talk about what uh, led you to um, start the zine and and get your contributors and start? So I worked for um, a Facebook page when I first started doing Harley Quinn, and I would I pretty much just went on and would do little posts every single morning about what I did the night before and make it sound crazy and like I was from Gotham. Um, and then I, I had a young lady write me and ask me if the administrator was asking me the same things he was asking of her. Okay. Uh, she was a bigger girl and she did Harley Quinn and she did an amazing job with her Harley Quinn. And he pretty much was saying, if you want to be in my magazine or you want to be on my page, you have to send me nudes because that's the only way you're worth it. And uh, she sent me these things and I was very upset. And then afterwards I received a couple messages from a people of color who were doing amazing Harley Quinns and he would not allow them on his page either saying it was incorrect um, and it really really irked me uh, I've not been a part of the cosplay community very long and I didn't realize that this was a thing so um, as soon as I did I, I left his page I went and made my own um, do you mind going grab him before he goes out in the aisle and, uh, so we would go live we'd play little games and stuff um, and people really, really liked it. And we really enjoyed having a safe space for everybody to share their art and their cosplays and just be able to be themselves. So I decided I was gonna start a magazine for it too. That way people who don't get known and do amazing jobs on their cosplay can be shared. People who just wanna share their stories, cosplays, rant about whatever's going on at the con, regardless if it's happy or sad. Um, that way, everybody has a place to talk. It then turned into psychological backgrounds on characters, uh, interviews. We, we actually interviewed a, a really good friend of mine. And <laughs> she lives in a house full of nerds. Like, it's fun for me to go down there and see her. But um, she's just like, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. So we actually interviewed her. And would, what's your favorite piece of jewelry? And we'd give her options and stuff. And she's just sitting there. I, and it's just hilarious to do. So it was like the reverse of what happens to us all the time. Um, and I have, I have an awesome staff. I really, my staff has helped me out. It was a bunch of friends and I'm like, hey, I wanna make an inclusive area for everyone to have fun. Would you guys mind helping me with this? And they were right on board from the beginning, so. I, I will say there's some definitely something superhero-ish about what you did there. You, you took a tragedy, and it truly is a tragedy both the ridiculous sextortion that was going on there by that admin, but also, you know, the ridiculous nature of saying, oh, you can't, you can't dress up as this character just because you're not the right race or the right ethnicity. That's ridiculous. It, comics are all about, you know, falling into our imaginations and, and the fantastical. And, and it happens within the comics anyway, right? There's, you know. We relate to these characters because of what they look like. We relate to these characters because of what they are. I'm, I'm afraid of what that says about you, but okay. <laughs> We're not getting into that right now, okay? Um, so, how did you get involved? Well, I'm a friend of hers, yeah. and um, we're both, again, I'm a nerd, I'm a little, I'm a slightly different generation, so I have a different take on some of the characters, and there are characters that I, I often will make jokes, and she's like, what? <laughs> but, um, not mostly, it's on, and I like to write, and I've been going to science fiction conventions since 1983, and I'm I love, I've seen them get more inclusive in exactly the ways that she wants and people want it to go. And I want anything I could do to help promote that, you know. And plus, again, the stuff that I write, I like to write a columns. I wrote a column about how to survive a convention, you know, meaning so you won't end up sick and tired and just strung out at the end of it. I wrote a history of costuming going back to the 1930s because... The very first science fiction convention in 1939 had people dressing up. Yeah. And so costume, and I've dabbled in costuming over the years. I haven't done it lately, but I love it. I love it so much. The, the, the amount of ingenuity and the, so many of these costumes are mostly homemade. And yeah. that, is, that impresses me to no end. Yeah, the, the, uh, the costume contest yesterday, there'll be footage of it on the site, yeah. was, 
was incredible. It was really amazing. Oh, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, anything anything I could do to help promote any of that or, or nerd nerd culture in general, you know, I'm all about. Um, Jesse, where where can people uh, get the zine? How can they get the zine? Uh, well, we have a webpage. It will be down tonight for a day um, because we're switching ser- uh, hosts. But um, it, we have an online site. We have a Facebook. We have a Twitter. We have an Instagram. Um, and we're always looking for writers. We're always looking for people who just want to share their opinion, their cosplays. Uh, one of the other things that we really want to focus on is we hear about the same few people in the cosplay world over and over and over again. And there's so many of us that put so much heart and soul into it. We deserve to be recognized too. And when we come to these kind of things, a lot of times people take pictures, they don't get your name, they don't, or you just find yourself online and you're like, hey, that's me. And nobody knows. Yeah. Um, So we definitely want to make sure that everybody gets credit and gets to be seen for their amazing talents and all the things that they put their heart into. Yeah, I I would say that one one good thing that is I've seen recently and and Baltimore Comic Con does have this on their site is the starting to publish a harassment policy. You know, uh, when when I first came here, there was definitely a lot of um, people who you'd see taking unsavory photos, not asking people, not respecting people. Right. If you're if you're dressed up at a convention, you want people to know you want people to take pictures but you want people to be polite you're still a person you're not that is a huge thing right. um actually a, a friend of mine bought one i need to get the site from her i'm actually going to be posting it on all of my stuff and i'm going to have an ad in my magazine for it there are now big buttons like pins you can buy that are like huge and they simply say this photo was taken without my consent um and that way you can take it off when you are allowing a photo but otherwise people are going to have to have that almost like a water tie a watermark in your photo. that I, I love that idea yeah. that was a genius who came up well, with I mean, that and again I, I aside from working on the magazine i do i i help run security or public safety they call it they're calling it now at a lot of conventions so the concept of harassment policies and respecting people uh respecting attendees and having it, it i'm i've been kind of up 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 to here, in a, up to here in the working part of it. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm completely down with it because you know it, it. For me, it comes down to you know be excellent to each other, party on guard. Yeah. But in this day and age, some people need a little more clarification. Sure. And, and it's all. Yeah. It's all. It's an evolving thing. Yeah. But again, just because yes, you, you wear a costume, you want people to see the costume, but that's not the same as getting your picture taken. Right. You, that's true. That's you true. might be wanting to just chill out. Not everybody. Yeah likes the pressure of the uh, of their of, of eyes on them yeah. all the time that makes perfect sense so that makes sense yeah I, I think that's a thing that people don't think about um most people nowadays have anxiety and these these things tend to be surrounded by people you don't know which is very anxiety you know and in, in my in my subjective experience i think fans tend a little more to anxiety because even with the acceptance of it in this day and age one of the things that I think I know that drew me into comics and science fiction was I was I was a shy kid right and it's maybe it's a generalization but you know you get a bunch of shy people together you know we've actually had someone so one of the other Harley Quinns here this is her first, this was her first convention and she's like I feel like I finally found my people <laughs> and I know exactly what that because I yeah. remember the first time I went to a science fiction convention and I was I had friends and we, we gamed and we did nerdy yeah. stuff together but it was only like four or five out of a high school of 300 right and I get to a convention and there's five six hundred people who are all exactly you know they, they, they love the same things I do right. I had a wonderful hour-long conversation with a stranger I have no idea who they are to this day <laughs> but we, we were into the same games right and that is a powerful feeling and it gets yeah. the better of people that's very true um, so so to kind of wrap up you uh, as we were talking before you were saying that um, you love Harley. You're you're always dressing up as Harley. And um, what what drew you to Harley? What what made you uh, become fascinated with her? Okay, so like most people, I I was introduced to Harley around '94. I think she'd already been around for about a year, um, and I just loved her character. She was very bubbly. I have a uh, very hard past. I grew up in and out of foster homes and such, um, and it was somebody that was experiencing pain and trauma with me. Sorry, I yawned. Um, but uh, she uh, 
she just was fun and no matter what she smiled she was constantly being abused and she could walk away from it every now and then but she was still abused regardless and she could just smile through it and it was something that really meant a lot to me at the time um i had actually forgotten about her as i got older and when suicide squad came out my friend was like hey have you ever heard of this character like yeah i remember that um and i started going back through my comics and stuff and i was like hey I understand now why I relate to this person, yeah. and since then I have been in a uh, horribly abusive relationship, um, and I've lost some of the most important people in my life, and I very much so connect to the character because of that. It's one of those, I know now what it feels like to get up and walk away from all of it and find friends and know that they're friends, but at the same time you don't always trust people anymore. So. And I think that's the reason why I really wanted the magazine to be so inclusive and to share these people's stories because we live in a society where we don't always know, even though we're a part of this, we don't know who we can trust. And for people of color and LGBT people, there are a lot of people that go, oh, I support you. And then they do something like this or they show their passion in something and immediately the story and it just changes and it's not fair. So I want everyone to have a place. Okay. So it's it's a it's a, someone you really deeply relate to because you share a lot of characteristics. I do. Yes, unfortunately, sometimes that's not a bad sometimes it's not a bad thing. Sometimes it's it's not a good thing. I've been told anyway. Sure. Apparently, tagging federal buildings and stuff is not good. Well, th thank you for thank you for sharing with us, you know, and and sharing with your fans in the in the fanzine. So just to reiterate, you know, I was looking through the zine, talking with you guys, you know, there's there's a lot of really deep articles. You guys uh, explore a lot of things, the psychology of Harley, the psychology of Joker. Um, there are short stories in there. Um, there's uh, Actually, what? the person on his badge, Benjamin Lee Crown, <laughs> uh, is one of our writers, and um, he has a short story. It starts at the beginning of this year, and it actually ends at the end. Okay. Um, and we're going to be doing that again next year. So if you have short stories and you want them shared, we're more than happy to share short stories. So you guys are looking for contributors to the to Absolutely, the always. Um, we do write-ins. We did a, recently we did a Women Who D&D. &D. Okay. Um, we're always looking for people to share their story. We come up with ideas, but I mean, even if your story that you want is not anything like that, send it to us. We will probably be very, very happy to put it in. We won't do hate speech. We won't do politics. Um, and we won't do anything that it has any kind of bigotry in it. But other than that... Which, you're probably not going to like our magazine if you have any of those qualities <laughs> anyway. Um, we actually, when we did it, I wanted to make a statement right off the bat. And I asked a really dear friend of mine named Chandelier, um, who is a local drag queen, if she m would mind me just putting her straight on the cover and sharing her story right off the bat. I was like, Cause I, I really wanted to get across that this is inclusivity at the utmost if you, you're not into that, I don't want you to even care about the magazine, really. Pick it up if you want, though. You might learn something. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, so, hey, this is a sounds like it's a magazine for those of us who are really, really into the fandom. And, you know, as, as you were saying, sometimes we're kind of the dregs of society. I mean, it's getting more and more mainstream, but, but still. But there's, still, there's still an outsider aspect, and there's yeah. still, you know, that <laughs> little... <laughs> We're on the edges of the mainstream at you know sometimes yeah. at best, and yeah. you know it's yeah, and, and it's nice to know. And like any microcosm, there's edges to that, right? right. And and so you guys are exploring some of those things, the diversity, yeah. um, and and the inclusivity in every aspect, um, like like you said, in, including um, you know the drag aspects and all that. So um, thank you guys both for taking the time to talk thank to you me. So much. And everybody, make sure you, you find their Facebook page and all the places you can find.